Hello and welcome to this new video series which considered a complete practical project aims at guiding you step by step until you become capable of building a web application like professionals. Instead of teaching in an academic way the standard tools in Visual Studio like Form View or List View for example, which I can defy you to find any professional website nowadays using these tools. So we will instead build our own website in such a contemporary way. For example, all the respectful websites are avoiding postbacks and make their pages respond immediately in a way that gives the user the impression that he is working inside the desktop application instead of a website page. And this could only be accomplished through depending on the Ajax techniques. And when I say the term Ajax over the course of this video series, I don't mean the Visual Studio standard Ajax tools or even the Ajax toolkit. I mean creating web service ASMX file and connect the server code inside it with the JavaScript code. So at the beginning let's discuss our website's idea and the services it offers. This virtual website aims at helping the architects by giving them a lot of home design ideas in order to inspire them to create their own design ideas or even download the original working files of any particular design then run any required modifications from their part. The website also helps the regular visitor who wants to construct his own house by picking a particular design and ask any consultant office for designing his house inspired from the design style he has already chosen and fits inside his available landscape as well. So in other words we can say that the type of product the site sells is the design. This design has related files. Each file is either an image file which is free to download or a project file like those working drawings done using the AutoCAD software or Revit which is not free and could only be downloaded after entering the visitor's credit card. We will take into consideration as well while building the website that the only one who has the privilege of adding a new design or edit it is either the user who has the role of admin or a user who has the role of staff. However, the staff user has the privilege to edit only the designs which have already been uploaded by him whereas the admin user has the privilege to edit any design. The admin also should be the only one who has the privilege of controlling the design's display order inside the home page and even delete or hide it. The regular visitors on the other hand should have the opportunity of adding any design to their favorites list and view it later just like the YouTube playlists. They should also have the opportunity of rating a design, comment it, or even like or dislike any comment exactly like any social media website. But before starting, take into consideration the following points. The project folder we will use as a starting point is the same project we have already accomplished on our previous series, Identity System in Visual Studio 2015. And I have already placed a link for that previous video series inside this video's description. Watching the previous course is recommended, but not mandatory to follow up with the current course. Unlike the previous course project, this project has been built using Visual Studio 2013 instead of 2015. Just for one reason, as version 2015 database is only compatible with SQL Server 2016, and the latest version of SQL Server I have already installed on my machine so far is 2012. However, I can assure you that there is almost no difference between Visual Studio 2013 and 2015, as version 2015 has heavily focused on developing the MVC projects. The big leap in Visual Studio ASP.NET has happened since version 2013, as according to Microsoft team, this version has been written from scratch, especially when start talking about the identity system. After watching each video inside this series, you can download the project's code through the hyperlink included inside the video description. If you want to practice yourself, download the code for the previous video and practice while watching. The server code used inside this project is Visual Basic. However, C# -sharp users can still benefit from the course by translating VB code to C# -sharp code through the following URL. This video series is not for the beginners, so be sure that you meet the following pre-requests before start learning. Now let's discuss what is the course pre-requests. So in order to follow up with us, you have to be aware of the HTML language and styling using the cascading style sheets. 
As a good learning source, I strongly recommend visiting www.w3schools.com. So if you delve to this uh, website and go to the Learn HTML, you will find the site guides you step by step to learn everything and try it by yourself. So you can change the code and see the result here immediately. Bootstrap plugin. Since the new Visual Studio default template has been built using Bootstrap, as a good learning source, I recommend lenda.com bootstrap3 essential training. If we click this link, after you enter lenda.com, just type here on the search bootstrap3 essential training and you will immediately go to this course. However, lenda.com doesn't offer its learning materials for free. But the good news is that you can start your free trial now. So the free trial will be for about 7 or 10 days, I think. However, you have to give them a valid credit card number. You have to also be aware about jQuery plugin, as it almost becomes the only way to design contemporary websites. As a good learning source, I recommend the following book, jQuery 4th edition. If we click here, this will guide us to the jQuery website. And when you go to the official jQuery website, you will find here an announcement for the jQuery 4th edition. And I will not consider myself exaggerating if I tell you that I have already enjoyed every single line I read inside this book. And it's a very, very helpful source for learning such a plugin. However, if you find yourself lazy to read this entire book in order to start the course with us, I recommend only read chapter 11 from this book, beginning ASP.NET 4.5 in C Sharp and Visual Basic from rocks.com. However, I don't recommend searching here for ASP.NET Visual Studio 2015, as the latest version of this book is only talking about C Sharp and ASP.NET MVC with the C Sharp language as well. If you open this book here and go to chapter uh, 11, you will find a very good explanation for this plugin, and that would be more than enough to understand our course's videos. Next. You have to be aware also about the Entity Framework and Link Language as they offer a very easy way to access the database without having to write long lines of object-oriented programming code. As a good learning source, I recommend reading Chapter 14 from the same previous book. So if you go to Chapter 14 here, you will see that Chapter 14 is talking about this topic. So let's continue from where we have already stopped in our previous User Identity course. Right click on default and view in browser. And this is how the default.aspx looks at the current moment. As we can see here, there's a lot of things that we are going to get rid of. For example, I will get rid of the application name, the about, the contact, and I will leave the user's manager that we have designed on the previous course. And I will change this icon here in order to appear exactly like this icon. I will change also the myasp.net with my, our project name. So let's see how to do that. So on the site.master, I will go here and delete the application name hyperlink. I will delete also the about and the contact. And I will change here myasp.net application, which appears here to 101 home design ideas. Okay, another thing we have to do here is to change the page title. So whatever the page title is, it will be written here, followed by hash, and then the application name. So I will copy what I have already typed here and paste it here. Now for the icon. As you can see here, if you search the icon, currently, the current icon now is favicon.ico, which is that one here. So I will replace it with another icon that I have already prepared. Actually, I have here an image. If we go to image, image size, we can see that this image is 52 pixels times 38 pixels. The first rule we have to follow here is to make the image square. So I will go to image canvas size and I will increase the height. So I will set the units in pixels and I will increase the height to 52 pixels to get a square icon and then 
I prefer to make the images width and height 64 pixels, so image image size 64 pixels. Okay, now I save the image. This image has been saved as PNG. However, the PNG is not available to be placed as an icon. The file has to have the extension .ico. So in order to convert a PNG to ICO, this will not be possible through the Photoshop software. We have to go to a website that is specified on doing that. So one of the good websites that is specified in doing that is icoconvert.com. So icoconvert.com. Okay, now let's choose a file that we are going to upload. And I will select this file and click on upload. Now the file has been uploaded successfully. Now let's change it to an ICO format with a width and height of 64 pixels and then click on the convert button. Download your icon and I will place it on the project's root folder. So I will let the name to be people only and click on save button. Now if you go to our projects folder and refresh okay it's not appearing here but if you go to this href and type people.ico and click on save all then refresh the home page you will get the icon here so this is the icon of our website now let's start designing our home page our default home page is currently divided into two dev elements which is a jambotron this is the first thing that we want to change and we want also to delete all of those stuff here so let's go to default.aspx and starting from here I will delete all of this stuff so dev class equal row closing dev tag delete all of those stuff now let's save all and let's refresh so the jumbotron is a bootstrap class which makes the element occupy the entire page's width now let's delete the Jumbotron content and put a single image inside it. So I will copy this image now. So this is the image we are going to copy. I put here a watermark in order to protect the copyrights. So let's copy this image and let's go here to our project folder and put it inside the images folder. And then I will type here image source equal it's easier to pick the URL, images, and Jumbotron. That's enough. And let's save all and let's refresh our page. Now, as you can see here, the default Jumbotron has a too much padding here. So if you right click to inspect the element, we can see here that the padding is too much. 60 pixels for the padding, padding right and padding left. So if we set the Jumbotron padding, to zero for example we will find that all the gray area around the image will vanish but the problem here is that this image is flowing beyond the dev element so our dev element is here this is the boundaries of our dev element the orange boundaries since the image has a width larger than the jumbotron dev element it will flow outside the jumbotron element in order to solve that I will make the image here has a width of 100 percent this will solve the problem however we have to do all of that here on our page it's okay to type everything here in line so style equals for the jumpotron the styles the style would be padding equals zero and for the image style equals width 100 percent let's save all and let's check here by refreshing ok now we are ready to design the rest of the default.aspx page however on the next video we will discuss how to edit our default project database from within SQL Server Management Studio instead of editing it through Visual Studio as this will help us to easily create new tables graphically and avoid opening too much windows inside Visual Studio thanks for watching if you like the video please press like